Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV. I've been getting a lot of requests to make a video on how to wire a condenser unit outside, a straight AC condenser unit, just basic wiring. So for example, if you come out to a unit and the capacitor is just gone, the wires are dangling, where do those wires go? You know, if you get a new capacitor, or let's say the contactor is completely disconnected, all the wires are off of it. Where do the wires go in that case? Or maybe there was just a big mouse nest, the mice just wreaked havoc, all the wires are just cut in half because this was during the winter, no power was on, the mice really made themselves comfortable. But anyways, long story short, this video is going to be all about how to wire a condenser unit from scratch. And as you can see, we're taking this inside the house, classroom style, with a whiteboard and everything. So here we got all our condenser unit components. We got the dual run capacitor, the condenser fan motor, the compressor, contactor, the disconnect, and if you have a furnace, along with your air conditioner, you'll have a control board where you're getting the 24 volts from. And as you can see, I only drew the components and there's no wires or no wiring diagrams at all. Just the components are on here. The condenser fan motor doesn't have a CRS because on the compressor there's actually the pins that are labeled. The condenser fan motor usually just has three wires sticking out of it and you hook up those three wires. So we got all our components, but no wires. So let's go ahead and add all our wires in, starting with the 240 power supply. A lot of times it'll be a red and a black wire, along with the green wire that are in there. And you got your disconnect that's probably gonna be mounted to the side of the house. It'll either have a breaker, it'll have like a lever on the side of it, on off, or if you pull it up, it might have a plug where you pull the power. But basically you have 240 volts coming from your circuit breaker panel into your disconnect from the house. And then from there, it goes through the electrical whip and into the contactor. So this electrical whip will have three wires. Usually they're gonna be black, red, green, and we're gonna go ahead and start with them. So from the electrical whip, the black wire will go to one side of the contactor. Then we got a red wire. That will go to the other side of the contactor. And then we have a ground, which is going to be a green, that will just be mounted to the chassis. A lot of times the condenser unit will have a little square screw like this that you put the ground wire into and tighten it down. Ground goes somewhere to the metal casing of the condenser unit. So now we have our main power supply hooked up. Each of these hot legs is 120 volts to give us 240 volts. They're hooked up to our unit, to the contactor on one side of them, L1 and L2. And as you can see, there's a break in the line right here. And this signifies those two little plungers that pull in on the contactor. These are normally open until the thermostat calls for cooling and then they suck in and let the power through. And next up, let's go ahead and wire up our compressor. The compressor will have three wires coming out of it. A wire coming from the common, the run, and the start windings. And there's only one thing you need to remember about this. The start winding always goes to the run capacitor. So if you have a dual run capacitor, the start winding will always be the one that is connected to Herm. And the other two, the run and the common, will go on either side of the contactor. All you gotta do is make sure that you don't hook up both of these to the same side of the contactor. They do have to be on opposite sides. So let's see what this would look like. Let's start with the red. Hook up our common winding to one side of the contactor. And on the other side will be the run. We'll hook that up to here. And then the start winding will go to the run capacitor. Like that. And our black line is a little lopsided. I don't like that, let's fix that. There you go, that looks much better. So our compressor is wired up now. Next up is the condenser fan motor. And a lot of them will be three wire fan motors. If you have a four wire, I actually have a video on how to wire a four wire condenser fan motor. In this scenario, we're gonna go with the three wire. And once again, just like the compressor, one wire, which is typically either brown or purple, will go to the fan on the dual run capacitor. And the other two wires have to go on either side of the contactor. And if possible, I like to keep the wire colors on the same side of the contactor. So the black that comes from the compressor should also be the black that comes from the fan motor. 
and goes to the same side and hopefully there's a red or whatever other color that can go to the other side of the contactor. So let's see what that'll look like. So you have three wires coming out of your condenser fan. Let's start with this one. Like that. The second wire will go to the other side of the contactor. Like that. And I know that this isn't exactly correct on most wiring diagrams. If a wire is touching like that, that means both of those wires are connected like via a wire nut or something. In this case, we're disregarding that. These two wires are not connected. And then our third wire will go to the fan on the dual run capacitor. Like that. And there you have it. We have the 240 volt side all hooked up. And this is without a start capacitor. Actually, we can add a start capacitor, a hard start kit, or a start capacitor with a potential relay just to show you how that would look like. But before we do that, let's finish this up. We got our 240 volt circuit all hooked up. And last but not least, we got the 24 volts coming from inside the house. And if you have a furnace hooked up like I do, what that would look like is you'll typically have a two wire thermostat wire running from inside the house and going out to your unit and hooking up to the contactor coil. I have it drawn like this just so it looks cleaner, but a lot of times you'll actually have wire terminals on either side of the contactor. So one wire will go here and the other here. And these wires are hooked up to Y and C on the control board. A lot of times it'll be a red and a white wire. So the Y is going to be supplying the 24 volts and the C of course is the common. And then on the other end, those two wires will go to the contactor coil. One on one side and one on the other. And it does not matter which wire goes to which side of the contactor coil. Okay, so we have everything wired up. And if we turn on our unit with the wires being the way they are, nothing will work. And I don't know how many of you caught this, but I totally forgot to hook up the common on my dual run capacitor. And that, of course, is important. And the common from the run capacitor will go to the same place as the wire coming from the run winding on the compressor. So it would look like this. There. With that wire there, now everything will work the way it should. But let's say that we want to add a hard start kit to the unit. So let's say this is a hard start kit. It has two wires coming from it. Hard start kits will only have two wires. And these wires will simply go one to common on the dual run capacitor and the other one to Herm on the capacitor. And that's it for a hard start kit. But if you wanted to put in a start capacitor with a potential relay, it would be a little bit more complicated. And let's just see, let's see an example of what that would look like. So let's draw our potential relay in the form of this box right here. And our start capacitor will be right here. And then of course we have the 521. There's going to be three terminals like that. There's going to be a normally closed switch here. Looks like that. And then a coil here. So let's label the terminals on our potential relay. This right here will be five. This one is two, and this one over here is one. So the way you would wire this up is one on the potential relay will be hooked up to one side of the start capacitor with a jumper wire. So you got one piece of wire going from there to there. Two will go from the potential relay to Herm on the run capacitor like that. 
and then five on the potential relay will go to T2. So it would look like this. And I'll just put a dot here, which means that these wires go to the same place. So five will go to T2. And then the other side of your start capacitor, you'll have a wire going from there to common on the run capacitor, or it could be hooked up to T1. So that's what that would look like. Well guys, and that's all I had for you today. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions about what you saw, or if you're a technician, or maybe you've worked on this before, and you have some pointers, additional pointers that you can add to what I was talking about here, that would be awesome if you could say that in the comments below. A lot of times the discussions that happen in the comments are as good as the video itself, sometimes even better. So I definitely encourage everybody to check out the comment section and do participate in all the conversations. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, I have a question for you. How do you make holy water? The answer is, you boil the hell out of it.